Shalom. I would like to talk today about the seventh day Sabbath. Hashabbat. Hashabbat. I know in the English language, in the English world, in the English speaking world, the Sabbath is often thought of as Sunday. Sunday is the Sabbath. And of course, that's not true. Biblically speaking, the Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. And in Dutch, we don't have that problem. Sunday is Sunday and the Sabbath, that's the Saturday. Well, it's actually from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset. I'm talking about the seventh day Sabbath. I've been keeping the Sabbath for 41 years now. And in doing so, you learn lots of things. Why, the reasons for the day, what the day means, etc. And I used to teach English and French in a high school. And I also had classes that I taught them how to study. And in one of those lessons, there was this Chinese proverb, because the lessons, they would give hints, they would give instructions of the pupils how to study. But it says, but if you don't do it, if you don't do it, then, then you will not learn from it. You have to do it. And it, it, this, this lesson, this particular lesson quoted this, this Chinese proverb. And it said, it says, it goes something like this. That which I hear, I forget. That what I write down, I remember. But that what I do, I understand. And that's very much true for the seventh day Sabbath. If you do, if, if you just listen to me, you will forget it. If you write it down, you'll remember it. But if you do it, if you start doing it, then you will start understanding the deeper meaning of God's Sabbath, of God's seventh day Sabbath. Well, there are several reasons. I once wrote an article, 36 reasons why I keep the Sabbath, but that's a bit long for this talk. So, and I shortened that article to 17 reasons why I keep the Sabbath. And I'll just mention about five, six or seven of them today. And the first reason I want to bring forward is, is God. It is the will of God. It's not man. It's not Jewish. It's not Old Testament. It's God. God there are 14, 14 verses that, that says, my Sabbaths, my Sabbath or my Sabbaths. 14 verses in the Bible. So they're God's. They're his. They're not man's. They're his. For instance, Leviticus 19, verse 3. Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father, and you shall keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. God didn't say you should keep the, test, the, the, the Sabbath of the Old Testament. You should keep the Jewish Sabbath or the, the, Israel, the Israelite Sabbath. No, you shall keep my Sabbaths. And Leviticus 19, verse 30. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. So that's the first reason, because it's God's, it's his. The second reason to keep God's Sabbath is because Jesus did so, Christ did. He is our example and he, God created everything through Christ. So it was actually Christ who made the Sabbath in Genesis 1 and 2. So the second reason is because I want to follow Christ's example. And it says here so in Luke 4 verse 16, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and he went to the synagogue as his custom was. It was his custom. He was a Jew. He would go to, he would keep the Sabbath. Actually, it's one of the, it's the fourth commandment. We'll see that later. So he had, if he hadn't kept the Sabbath, he would have sinned. It would have been a sin to him not to keep the Sabbath. It was his custom. And Luke 4, verse 31, And he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath. That was his habit, to teach the crowd on the Sabbath. He would go to the... He would, you know, he, he differed with the Pharisees about how to keep the Sabbath, because they had made all sorts of rules and regulations, uh, regulations that were not in the Torah, that were not in the Bible. And he differed with them 
you know, upon those upon those things. But he didn't differ upon about the biblical things about the Sabbath, about not working. You know, he, he healed people, but that of course was lifting a burden from the people. You know, you're not you're not you're not supposed to carry burdens on the Sabbath. But an illness is a very, very bad burden. You're really burdened if you have a bad illness, a chronic illness, a chronic disease. So by touching them, he just healed them. He didn't charge money for that. And it was not work to him. It was not difficult. He just healed them so that they could really have a rest. They, they could really have a restful Sabbath. It's like pulling an ox from a ditch he compared it to. So that's the second reason but Jesus, the Lord, has got the Father, got the Son, and now we go to the Holy Spirit, to the aspect of holy. Uh, we've got Father, Son, and Spirit, so that's why I took the first reason for God, my Sabbaths, the second reason Christ, because he kept them, and Paul says some, somewhere, follow my example the way I follow Christ. And Paul, he went, he went to synagogue always on Sabbath, and he, he, you know, he worked during the week and, and, and the Sabbath, he, he, he taught and he preached Christ on the Sabbath. So the third reason to keep the Sabbath is for me is because the seventh day is holy. The seventh day is holy. God, God sanctified the seventh day. He didn't sanctify other days. He didn't sanct sanctify the third or the fourth or, or, or even the sixth or the first day. No, he sanctified the seventh day. It's a holy day. It's a holy Sabbath. In Exodus 16, verse 23, we read about this, the story about the manna. And he said to them, this is what the Lord com has commanded. This is what Moses said. Moses said, this is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord, a holy Sabbath. You know, God's Sabbath days are holy. They are set apart. Bake what you will bake and boil what you will boil. boil, And all that is left over may be, be laid by to be kept till the morning. This is the story. This is the story about the manna. But I just typed in in my computer, Holy Sabbath, to see what sort of verses I would get. And I got this verse from the manna story. But also Nehemiah and Nehemiah, they, they, they're having a day of fasting and they, they are they're sort of remembering everything that happened in the past. And, and it said, thou didst make known to them thy holy Sabbath and command them commandments and statutes and law by Moses thy servant. So they're recognizing that they have sinned as a nation. And they recognized that God had made known to the Israelites because it had gone lost. They were slaves in Egypt and the slaves, you can't work. You have to work seven days a week. So they were slaves. They lost the Sabbath. Probably the, the, the patriarch still had the Sabbath, but they lost it. And you made known to them thy holy Sabbath. The Sabbath day is holy. Now, a fourth reason... The fourth reason to keep the Sabbath is, and I've linked it to the fourth commandment. That's why I take the fourth reason as the fourth commandment, because it's the fourth commandment of the Ten Commandments. There are Ten Commandments, and it's so important to God uh, that he actually put the Sabbath within the Ten Commandments. There are four commandments, love towards God, and there are six commandments, love towards neighbor. Well, if you, if you break one of those commandments, James says, if you, if, you, if, you, if you break one of those principles, one of those points, you've sinned against all of them. And it says here, you know, the, the, the Ten Commandments, they're in two places in the Bible, in Exodus 20, verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You had to remember it. Four chapters before that, they had received the Sabbath day before coming to Mount Sinai. And, you know, the manna story is in Exodus 16. That's two weeks before before the, the Ten Commandments are given on Mount, on, on Mount Horeb, on Mount Sinai. 
And in Deuteronomy 40 years later, later Moses says in 5 verse 12, Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. Remember the Sabbath day in the Hebrew that is Zachor at Yom HaShabbat. Zachor, remember. And, but that is slightly different. In Deuteronomy 5 it says keep the Sabbath day holy. Shamor. And those two candles that, that people light on Friday evening, the Sabbath candles, they are called Zachor and Shamor. Remember and keep. Remembering is not enough. You can remember it and then just go on. It's just like looking in the mirror. So you see you've got a dirty face and you remember it and you don't do anything about it. Remembering is not enough. You have to do something about it. You have to keep it. You have to keep the Sabbath day. Zachor and Shamor. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it. And uh, yeah, if, if, you, if, if you break one of the commandments, you break them all. So if, if you don't keep the Sabbath, the fourth commandment, then you don't put God first. That's breaking the first commandment. Then you don't listen to your heavenly father. Father is the fifth commandment. Then you steal God's time, stealing. That's the eighth commandment. Then you're having a false witness about, God's, about the fourth commandment, a false witness. That's the ninth commandment. So... If you break one of those commandments, you break all sorts of them. Okay? You know, the Ten Commandments, they're a unity, love towards God and love towards neighbor. And love towards God means doing those first four points of the Ten Commandments. And of course, doing all of them. But the first four are really directed towards God. And it says, it says keep, my, keep my Sabbath day holy. Because I, I'm telling you, I want you to. It's good for you. The fifth reason why I keep the Sabbath is to remember that God made everything. You know, especially in this world, it's very important to have this day. Every week I go to church, I keep the Sabbath day on the seventh day to remember that God made everything in six days. No evolution, no Darwin. No, God said, it is God says in his word that he made everything. And we read this, of course, in the fourth commandment in Exodus uh, 20. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. So everything that's in the earth, everything that is in heaven and everything that's in the sea. So if you find fossils, then they were made as well. Everything that's made in those in those three, the earth and the sea and the heaven. And he rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So it's it's a reminder of creation. It reminds us that we are creatures, that we are created by God. Very important in this day and age because everyone is just enamored by uh, by evolution and a creator God is something that really is on the back burner and is sort of old-fashioned to believe in a creator god who made everything in six days and but that's that's a reminder it's a reminder god is the creator and he made everything in six days and it, and this is even this this sabbath day is made two and a half thousand years before mount sinai so you can't say it's part of the old covenant yes god put it in the Sinaitic uh, covenant and he made it part of the Israelite covenant but it already existed two and a half thousand years before that because in Genesis 2 verse 2 it says and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made and it says here he rested but in Hebrew it says he sabbated. The verb resting in Hebrew is Shavat. It's, 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 it's a conjugation of, of the Sabbath. The Sabbath, he sabbated. He sabbated. It actually says in Hebrew, and he sabbated on the seventh day from all his work he, which he had made. Verse 3, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it 
because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. God created and made everything in six days. How do we know that? Well, first of all, first of all, it says so in in Genesis one and uh, Genesis two. Secondly, it says so in the fourth commandment in Exodus twenty, and thirdly, it says so in the Sabbath covenant in Exodus thirty one. It says in those in Exodus twenty and Exodus thirty one, in six days God made the heavens and the earth and the sea and and all that's in them. So. We've got three places in scripture at least where it says that God made everything in six days and he finds it so important that he gave us a weekly feast day to celebrate this. That's the first reason to keep Sabbath, to celebrate that you exist, that you've been made, that you've been created. When? On the sixth day. Man was created on the sixth day and on the seventh day God created the Sabbath by resting. As an example, four men to give that to man. We'll come to that later. No, we'll come to it now. The sixth reason, why do I keep the Sabbath? Because the Sabbath, was, the Sabbath was made for man. The Pharisees, they made, they, they put huge burdens on the day. And it, it appeared as if the Sabbath day was more important than the people it was meant for. So Christ himself says, Actually, he says three times that, that he is Lord of the Sabbath. In three Gospels, he says, therefore, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. He doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that he's Lord of another day. But he says three times that he's Lord of the Sabbath. But in Mark 2, verse 27, he says, And Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Yet, the six days of creation, man is created on the sixth day. And on the seventh day, God made the Sabbath by resting, by giving, an example, by giving an example. And he made that to give to man for man. The Sabbath is not for angels and it's not for, for wild animals. Uh, it's, it's an earthly institution for earthly man. Angels don't get tired. God doesn't get tired. And, and it's, not, it's not the day it's not a day of a Venus or Mars or any other planet. They, they have different lengths. No, it is a day of 24 hours of, you know, of, uh, uh, of Earth. It's one day and after six days you have one day of rest. And that's for man. It's not for worms or for tigers or for lions. They just go on hunting and they just go on digging. And it's not for angels, they just, they don't get tired and they just do what God tells them to do. It's for man. It's for man. And of course, for our cattle, for our oxen and for our horses, they should, they should rest in as well when we are resting. It's for man. God made the Sabbath and gave it to man. It's for us. The seventh day. God rested on the seventh day. Yeah, he didn't rest on the first day. He didn't rest on the sixth day. God rested on the seventh day. And we have to follow his example by resting on the seventh day. Genesis 2 verse 2. Uh, maybe this, you know, this is quite, quite a bit of repetition in this, but it's of course different stress. You now the stress is now the resting uh, the, the, on the seventh day. So I'm going to give four, four verses where this seventh day is mentioned. And on the seventh day, God finished his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day. And, you know, not on the first, not, not on the sixth, on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. And in Exodus 16, in the Sabbath, in the, in the manna story, so the people rested on the seventh day. Finally, they had seen the light and they were obedient and they, they, they rested on the seventh day. And in... The fourth commandment in Exodus 20, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that's in them, and he rested on Sunday. No, he didn't rest on Sunday, he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. 
Now, this verse starts with four, and four means reason. Four, because four in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. And, and it says here further on, therefore, therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. In Dutch we have because, it's even stronger, because. It gives here for and therefore, and that gives reason. It's because, because in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. And because the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, therefore. And Hebrews 4 verse 4, verse 4 in, the, in, the, in the New Testament. For he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. Now an eighth reason that I want to give to, to keep the Sabbath day is because we have rest in Jesus. We rest in Jesus. And we have peace in Jesus. We have rest. If, 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 if we have accepted his blood for, as atonement for our sins, then we have peace and rest in Jesus. Now, what are the numbers of, of, of the Sabbath? The numbers of the Sabbath are four and seven. Because it's the fourth commandment which tells us to keep the seventh day. Now, that's easy, isn't it? It's the fourth commandment to keep the Sabbath the seventh day. Now, remember that four and seven. Now in Matthew eleven verse twenty eight it says the following Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus says this Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you Sabbath. Matthew 11, verse 28. It's very easy to remember. 11, 28, you probably forget it all the time. Where is it? Sort of which, which, which verse is it? It's 11, 28. 11 is 4 plus 7. There you, there you have the 4 and the 7. 4 plus 7. 28 is 4 times 7. So you see, it's twice the number of the Sabbath. And it gives you rest. That's the last word of, of the verse. And rest, that is Sabbath. And the plus, you know, for plus, the plus is the cross. It is through the cross that we have rest in Jesus. And four times is a cross like that. It's a times. You know, this is a Hebrew cross and that's a the Phoenician cross. It's the top, the, la the, la the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So it's, it's in Luke 4 plus 7, verse 4 times 7, that Jesus says, if you come to me, I will give you rest. I will give you Sabbath. And this was not put in by Sabbath keepers. I mean, the verse, the first number, the, 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 the chapter numbering is from the 14th uh, century, of an of an Anglican of a, of a Roman Catholic bishop, and and the first numbering is of a Protestant uh, Protestant uh, printer in Paris who put in the verses in the in the 16th century. So those verses and and chapters they were put in by Sunday keepers. But isn't it sort of isn't it miraculous that it is that that that, that Jesus says I will give you rest, I will give you Sabbath, in chapter 11. 4 plus 7, verse 28, 4 times 7. Anyway, I think it's very funny. I think it's humor. I think it's got humor. And I think it's also a sign that God still wants us to keep Sabbath. Another reason to keep the Sabbath is that the Sabbath day is a symbol of the seventh millennium. There are about eight verses, there are about eight verses, about a thousand years. And uh, the first one in the Old Testament is Psalms 90, verse 4, in the, in the Psalm of Moses. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, or as a watch in the night. So a thousand years are like yesterday. And Peter, in 2 Peter 3, verse 8, he refers to this and he says, Do not ignore this one fact, beloved. That with the Lord, one day is a thousand years. One day is a thousand years. And a thousand years is as one day. 
So the six days of creation are followed by one Sabbath day. So the six thousand years under the six thousand years under Satan are followed by the seventh millennium under Christ. Six thousand years of war are followed by one thousand years of peace. Six thousand years of illness by 1,000 years of wellness, of healing, 6,000 years of, of, of confusion by 1,000 years of unity. So the wonderful world tomorrow, the millennium, the sabbatical millennium, the seventh millennium, the, the peaceful world, tomorrow's world, whatever you will call it, that, se that seventh millennium is every Sabbath I celebrate the seventh day, I, I celebrate something which is still to come. The Sabbath is still a symbol of something to come. Every Sabbath is a symbol of this millennium of peace, this millennium of rest. And in this millennium, the whole world will keep the Sabbath. Because it says in Isaiah 66 verse 23, from new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh will come before me, will bow down before me, says the Lord. So that's never happened. And it doesn't say from Sunday till Sunday, and from Christmas till Christmas, the whole, all flesh will come and bow down before me. He says from new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh will come down, will bow down before me, the Lord says in, in, in Isaiah 66 verse 23. So this... This, this seventh day is still a sign, a prophetic sign. We're still acting it out that, is, that we're longing for this seventh millennium, for this millennium of peace. And um, I've written a series of articles I write, and then uh, I tried to write an article on an A4 size article about something in the past, in the present, and in prophecy. I like alliteration, so PPP, past, present, prophecy, in the past, in the present, and in the future. And then I write about tithing in the past, in the present, and the prophecy, or about the new moon in the past, in the present, and the prophecy. And it's the same for the Sabbath. The Sabbath has meaning for the past, for the present, and for prophecy. In the past, that's looking back, looking back at creation, that God made everything. So every, every Sabbath we're looking back towards creation, that God made us and that he made everything. The present, that's, I talked about that, that's that we have peace in Christ. That's the present, that's, that we have Sabbath, that we have rest, that we have peace in Christ. And in prophecy, that's, that's the thing that hasn't happened yet. Christ will return and there will be a thousand years of peace. And the, the thousand years they are des described in Revelation 20. You can go there and read them. So there are there are reasons. There are plenty of reasons to keep the Sabbath. It's God's holy day. He instituted it. Jesus Christ. He kept it himself. He's our example. And God says these are my Sabbaths, and they still have meaning. You still look back, especially sort of in this day and age, uh, age of of evolution if it's it's an act of defiance to say no we did not evolve god created us in six days six thousand years ago when is the end of the six thousand years well i've calculated it but it's, it's sort of it's a bit tricky sort of you can't calculate it exactly sort of more or less sort of uh, the year 6000 is somewhere between 2013, 2050. Could be 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, because of a couple of snags there in, in scripture that, that, that make it impossible to calculate it exactly. But there is enough data that you can calculate it roughly. So we know, if we add up all the scriptures, we know we are at the end of the sixth millennium. We're at the end of the 60th century where exactly we don't know but it's coming soon god's millennium is coming soon jesus christ is coming soon to this earth to bring peace and then he will teach the sabbath just as he taught the sabbath in capernaum and just as he kept sabbath 
himself in the Garden of Eden because God created everything through him. I wish you well and if you keep the Sabbaths I wish you a very happy Sabbath very soon to come. Amen.